Horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go to I'm Silver. Jack Lewis owned one of the largest ranches in the territory and ran it with the help of his wife, Kate, who had been born and raised in the rough, wild country of the far west. Kate could ride and shoot as well as any man. And when she and her husband adopted an orphaned nephew, Larry Lewis, Kate was determined the boy would grow up to be one of the best riders and one of the best shots in the territory. By thunder, Jack, I'm going to see to it that little Larry grows up to be one of the shootingest, ridingest hombres in the West. Hmm. He'll make a real man of him. <laughs> well, with you training him, Kate, I begin betting on him right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Larry lived up to the hopes of his uncle and aunt, and the 25 was a tall, broad-shouldered fellow. He was as fearless as Kate herself, and even better with a gun and in the saddle. Late one afternoon, Kate and Larry were returning to the Big Lewis Ranch house after a trip to town. As they turned off the trail and rode in toward the house, they were startled by the sound of distant shooting. Larry, did you hear that? Yeah. That shooting came from the direction of the ranch house, Aunt Kate. Something's happening there. Get your gun, Pandy, and let's get going. All right. Get up there. Come on. Come on, boy. Get up. I don't see anybody near the ranch house. You? I see three horsemen riding the back trail. Leave them. Yeah, I see them now. But they're too far away for us to make out who they are. They were up to something. You can bet on that. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho. Oh, Come on. Yeah, right with you. Holy smoke. There's Uncle Jack lying on the floor. He hurt. He's been shot. Jack. Jack, what's happened? Speak to me. Rob the safe. The cattle money. I came in, caught it, and shot me down. Get some water quick, Larry. Sure, right away. We'll get you into bed, Jack, and fix your wound. Larry, ride for the doctor in town. No use, Kate. Not a bad they took me by surprise. I... Easy, easy, Jack. You'll be all right. Get water, I think. Help me raise him up. Sure. Here, here's water. 
I'm done for, Kate. No. No. Who were they? What did they look like? Three of them. One tall, red-headed, another heavy, short, scar on the wrist. The leader masked. <laughs> Go on. Go on, Jack. What about the leader? He, honey, get... Get a lone ranger. He... He... Larry. Larry, get a doctor. Hurry. No, no. No, Aunt Kate, it's too late. <gasps> oh. A doctor can't do any good now. <laughs> I can't believe it. Jack, go on. I'll leave. We only came a little sooner. Come on, Aunt Kate. Poor, poor Jack. If I could ever get my hands on those dirty coyotes who did this, I... Oh, wait. Wait, Aunt Kate. I just remember something. What did you remember? You heard what Uncle Jack said, that the leader was masked. He said to get the Lone Ranger, whoever that is. Oh, I can tell you that, Larry. He's an hombre who wears a black mask, a white steps, and rides a big white stallion. I saw him once, and Jack told me a lot about him. But I never thought he went in for robbing and killing. But Uncle Jack said the leader wore a mask. And then he said to get the Lone Ranger. Then you think he meant the leader was the Lone Ranger? Yeah, don't you? Come to think of it, I... I guess that's what Jack did me. And Kate, I'm going to hunt until I find that masked man. And see that he pays for what he and his men did, Uncle Jack. He'll be a hard one to find, I reckon. I'll think of a plan that may cause him to hunt me. So that someday we'll meet. What kind of plan? I'll tell you about it later, Aunt Kate. Right now, I... I'd better go for the coroner. Then tell the men what's happening. <laughs> It was three days later when Larry entered the living room of the ranch house and called out to Kate, who was in another room. Aunt Kate! Hey, there's Larry. I brought around that five white Arabian from the North Range. I can't see why you want to give up riding your Palomino after all the trouble you went That white horse is part of my plan. Yes, for Larry's sake. For a minute, I thought... Is this anything like the outfit the Lone Ranger wears, Aunt Kate? Oh, it is. Just about like it. It was just about his size, too. In this get up and with this black mask and the white array he ought to start people talking. Don't you think so? It sure will. But didn't you tell the sheriff about the masked man and the other two hombres? I told the sheriff Uncle Jack said there were three men. But I didn't tell him more than that. Why not? Uncle Jack brought me up the same way he would have raised a son. If he'd had one. I'm going to do what he'd expect of us. I'm going to do a personal job of tracking down those killers and sending them over to the law. Well, now, I don't doubt that, that you can do it. But where is I life? can ride as well as anybody. I'm a good shot. And I'm not afraid to face any hombre in this territory. Sure, Larry, I know all that, but how I'll do you... I'll search pre- every cafe within miles around. So I find either the red-headed outlaw or the one with a scar on his wrist. Then I'll force him to take it to the Lone Ranger's house. But why are you dressing like the masked man? I figured that the news will spread. When he hears someone dressed like him is riding the territory and searching the cafes, he'll be tempted to search me out. Once we meet, I'll get the best of him somehow. You'll need somebody along to make sure he don't get the best of you, Larry. He can't tackle the job alone. But who could I trust to take along? Me, that's who. You. But you're a woman. It wouldn't I be... I can pass for a man if I lower my voice and don't talk too much. Of course, I dread to look the part. But, Aunt Kate... I, I taught you all you know, Larry, about riding and shooting. All right. Come on if you want to. We won't return to this spread until we get all three of them. Especially that Lone Ranger. <laughs> During the next few days, Larry, who had fixed up according to his idea of what the Lone Ranger looked like, set out with Kate, who was dressed as a man. They visited one cafe after another in the nearby town. Oh, ho, ho there, Eddie. 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 Put him up, hold him. Let's line him up and look him over. All right. All right, you hombres. 
Line up over there with your hands high and be quick about it. All right, line up all of you. We're hunting for a couple of armories. Come on, get moving. Just the same last time we held up the cafe over question. Don't let him get away with it here. Calm down, somebody. I'll go now. Who's right now? Get down. Get down. Anybody else want to try a shot at me? You do, you'll get the same. Come on, let's get going. They aren't in here either. That's right, they are. Let's go. All right, stand where you are. Don't anyone try to follow us. And so it was in town after town as Larry and Pete continued their relentless search for the men who had shot Jack Lewis. One evening in their camp in the hills outside the town of Stockton, the Moon Ranger looked up as Trumple rode into the camp from town. Oh, come on, fella. Seems to be in a hurry, Tonto. Let me bring news. What is it? Me hear men say, masked man wearing white hat, riding white horse, hold up cafes and towns nearby. Someone posing as me, is that it? Ah, him have other fellow with him. Them go into cafes, line everybody up, look them over, and then leave. You mean they don't rob anyone? That's right. Then not take gold, just look at men, then leave. Well, that's strange. No one find out reason. One who wear masks, plenty quick and draw, can shoot, straight, ride, plenty good. Look like them hunt for someone. I think we'll have a search of our own, Tonto. I'd like to meet that imposter and find out what's going on. Ah. It seems logical that sooner or later they'll hit the cafe in Stockton. They keep a lookout for a while. Not a good idea. We'll go to town right now. I'll wait on the outskirts and you go to the cafe to watch. Here's a Very curious to know what's behind it all. Easy to be For several nights, the Lone Ranger and Tonto kept watch on a cafe in Stockton. Then one night, as Tonto stood at the end of the bar in the Stockton Cafe, it happened. All right, don't move, anybody. Huh? Got the covered. It's that masked hombre again. Yeah, the one who's going to every cafe in these parts. Better do as he says, man. I'll line them up, then we'll look them over. Get your hands up and line up over there. Yeah, an ornery looking bunch. I still don't see the ones we're hunting. Hey, look at this hombre. Well, tall, red-headed, and tough-looking, huh? Hey, what is this, anyhow? You haven't got the right... Never out here, you. Keep him coming. Oh, well. Now, look here. I'll you take can't... those guns. And you take us to your leader if you want to live. Now, start walking out the door, Redhead. Listen, you can't come here. We are here. We're taking you with us. Now, get moving and be quick about it. The rest of you, don't move or you'll get some less. All right, let's go. Get after him! Don't let him get away with this! Hold on, men! Don't open that door! You might get caught! There they go! Come on, men! Don't let him! While the crowd pushed outside after Larry and Kate, Tahoe, who had been watching from the rear of the cafe, went out the back door. A few minutes later, he joined the Lone Ranger at the edge of town. He told the Lone Ranger what had happened. I heard the commotion. The riders went out the other end of town. Not right. But there's something else, King of Sabi. Oh, what's that? When Masked Fellow pulled red headed man out of line, he see other fellow, short, heavy set fellow, sneak out back door, him ride back trail. That's interesting. Here, Silver. You trail fellow with Mask? No. We'll follow the man who rode the back trail. You think him lead us to Masked Fellow? Before the night's over, I think we'll come face to face with the man who's posing as me. Then we'll have a showdown. Easy. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
road to continue. Toto, watching in the cafe, had seen the holdup. He had also seen a short, heavy set man leave by the back door as Larry and Kate went out the front with Red. Toto reported matters to the Lone Ranger, and they started out to trail the man who had sneaked out the back door of the cafe. Meantime, one of the men from the cafe hurriedly entered the sheriff's office. Sheriff, there's been a holdup at the cafe. A holdup, you say? Well, not exactly that. You see, a masked man and another hombre busted in with drawn guns a little while ago. They lined us all up against the wall. Then after looking us all over, they picked out a tall, red-headed hombre and, well, and made him go along with them. Hey, hey, that must be the same two that's been busting into cafes all over the territory. I got a report on a tall masked man, another tough-looking hombre doing that sort of thing. Yeah, it must have been the same two then. Honey, they didn't rob all of you. The part they can't make out. Must be some reason why they do like they do. Well, I remember hearing the masked man say, "Funny uh, looking bunch," but I don't see the ones we're hunting. Uh, then, all of a sudden, the other one grabbed a hold of the big red head and pulled him out of the line. You don't say. Yeah, and then he said something about taking him to his leader. If Redhead wanted to live, and they forced him to go along with them. Well, I reckon this is my chance to track down that masked dummy. Look, why don't you to locate that deputy of mine? All right. Time to get enough men to form a party. All right, sure. Time to have the men meet me out front within five minutes. We'll pick up the trail of them three hombres, and before long, by thunder, I'll have that masked outlaw and his friend behind bars. Now get going, hurry it up, will you? Sure thing, sir. <laughs> Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto had no difficulty following the man who had gone out the back door of the cafe. The moon was bright and the trail was clear. As they trailed the short, heavy set man, they noticed that he rode into a small canyon. When they reached the canyon, the Lone Ranger pulled rein. Look, look, look. Taking a trail up the side of the canyon. Not right. It's been easier to ride the trail from the other side to reach the point he's going to. Why you think you not go other way? Might be as the others are riding that trail. This man wanted to get there first for some reason. Ah. And what we do now? We'll continue the following. Come on, Zulu. Get him up, Scout. Reaching the top of the canyon wall, the stocky horseman stopped before a shack, hidden in a clump of trees. Oh, hold it. Oh, Hi, Joe. That masked man came to the cafe at Stockton. Stu, I'm sure he's after. What makes you sure? Because he and his partner took Red with him, that's why. Red? Yeah. You remember we heard they was going from cafe to cafe looking at people's wrists and taking off the hats? You said yourself they might be looking for me with my scar or for Red. What happened to Red? I figured they might make Red lead him back to a hideout here. So I sneaked out and rode the back trail to warn you. Red saw me sneak away. Good. We'll go out and wait for him to come up the main trail. Red will bring him that way if you have to. We'll catch those hombres by surprise. Now, let's go. Meantime, Larry and Kate, with the outlaw Red riding between them, followed the main trail toward the hideout. What if he isn't taking us where we told him to? He's better if he knows what's good for him. I swear this is the way to the hideout. It sure better be. Trail turns to the right, just beyond those big boulders ahead there. The shack is just beyond. Good. Make sure you don't do any signaling. First sound out of you and you'll feel left. As the three approached the big boulders, they slowed their horses. Then as they passed the boulders and turned on the trail, Larry and Kate were suddenly startled by a sharp command from behind them. Keep riding. Right ahead. Don't turn around and you get close. All right, son, it's an ambush. Hey, you sure must have thought I was a fool to give in so easy. I knew I was leading you both into a trap. There's a shack just ahead. Stop there. Get off your horses. Inside for a little coffee. I was afraid something like this had happened. We're not licked yet. Oh, 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 so you're the masked hombre who's been searching the cafe, huh? Get your leader here. He's the one I'll talk to. I'm the leader of this gang. You? So you're the lone ranger. And without the mask... Hey, what's he talking about, Stu? He must be local. You got me on that one, Joe. Talking about masks. You take this off right now. Keep him coming, Joe. Right. Pull off that white step. 
That mad. What? What? The... Jumping Ted says she's Larry Lewis. So you know who he is, huh? Yeah. Maybe you know who I am. No. Hey. Well, I'll. A woman. That hat hit all her hair. Yeah, but why did she... I'm Jack Lewis's widow. You killed my husband. And someday I'll see all three of you hang. Yes, Kate, I'm sure sorry things turned out like this. Oh, forget it, Larry. You played your hand and lost. For the time being. So you two know about it, huh? Well, that's bad. Mighty bad. Yeah, what are we going to do with them, Sue? Well, since they know too much to be roaming around loose. Oh, yeah, but what are we going to do with them? That'll take a little thinking, though. They're going to be mighty sorry they know so much. And that they came here looking for them. <laughs> As the outlaws inside the shack discuss the situation, two figures crouch beneath the back window of the shack, listening and watching. Otto, that's Jack Lewis and widow and nephew. The nephew was posing his knee. Ah, and then think Lone Ranger, one of outlaws, to kill her husband. I don't know how they got that idea. Right now she thinks that outlaws do his knee without my mask. Those two are in a bad spot, Otto. Ah, maybe All right, you two sneaking tiles, don't move. I got two guns at your back. Hey, Joe, come here. Joe, come quick. Hey, what's up, Red? I found these two hombres here at the window. Let's take them inside. All right, sure. Hey, look. One of them's dressed just like that Lewis fellow was dressed. Mask, quite hat, and all. Mm, they don't savvy that. Come on, you two. Get inside. Come along, Joe. Uh-huh. Hey, look what we found outside, Sue. Well, what do you know? Another mask, hombre. White hat and everything, just like young Lewis was wearing. Hey, I'll bet he's a... That's him, Larry. He's the Lone Ranger. Yeah, keep him covered, boys. Right, and then, right. then you weren't in this game at all. That's yeah. right. But when my uncle was dying, he said, get the Lone Ranger. I thought... I knew your uncle was a friend. He must have meant to get your help in tracking down these outlaws. I'm sure that's what he meant, Larry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought if I made up like you, it would bring you out of hiding. That's all and... right. At least it brought us together with the men who killed Jack Lewis. We're together, all right. That just makes four to get rid of instead of two. Bigger guns, Red. Sure. Red has been standing behind the Lone Ranger and Toto. He holstered his gun as he moved forward, knowing that Sue and Joe, facing the masked man and Indian, had them covered from the front. As Red came up behind him, the Lone Ranger fought fast. And as Red reached out, the masked man dropped his hands in a lightning-like movement, grabbing Red's right wrist and pulling the outlaw around in front of him. The move had been unexpected and quick, so that with a fast draw, the Lone Ranger, shielded by Red's body, commanded the situation with a gun at Red's back. Look out, Red! Stay where you are, both of you. Rick, hey, look, the Indian has his gun, too. Stu, don't shoot! If you or Joe shoot, you'll hit me. That's right, they will. You deserve it, you clumsy coyote. I'll... No! Other fellow, ah. hold gun. Maybe him... No, no, you both got me covered. Get their guns, fellow. Uh, yeah. Hey, Redhead took right. our guns when we came in. Well, he get them from Redhead. Yeah. Now you take them. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Now you get over there with the others. Stu's to blame for Robin Lewis. He planned it. Get over there. <laughs> A short distance back along the trail, which Larry and Kate had followed with Red, the sheriff and the posse rode along until they reached the big boulders. There, they rang to a halt. Oh, 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 oh. What's that? Two horsemen came out from behind those boulders and rode along with the other three. I swear I don't savvy all this at all. Maybe somebody was awaiting there behind the boulders and ambush, Sheriff. Don't make sense, like you say, but that's the way it looks to me. Oh, if I am crazy, should anyone want to wait in ambush for them outlaws unless it was the law? By thunder, the whole thing's crazy. The masked man riding around, busting into cafes here and there, lining people up, and then never robbing them. Every one outlaw gang's a warrant against another, did you ever think of that? Could be that that red-headed fellow was with a gang the masked hombre fell out with or something. Well, if that's the case, by Jiminy, we might catch two gangs at the same time. That'll be a feather in your cap, Sheriff, if we did. Well, we won't catch nobody if we just sit here in the saddle jawing about it. Well, yeah, yeah. don't try to tell me what to do. After all, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> but I'm the Sheriff. I don't need you or anyone else to tell me what... Hey, you hear that shot? Yeah, it came from up ahead a ways. Come on, we'll find out about it right now. Get up! Meantime, after the crooks were lined up and their hands tied, Kate spoke. We will have to get them to the sheriff to stop them. We should have let the sheriff and his posse get after these men, Larry. 
It's a risky thing for you and Mr. Lewis to do. Mr. Ann Keat is a match for any man. She can ride, shoot. Forget and... it, forget it, Larry. We messed things up plenty. Yeah, I guess we did. That's all right now. It's wonderful of you to do what you've done. Hey, listen. A lot of riders coming this way. Keep these trucks covered, Larry. We're leaving now. Probably the sheriff and the posse will follow you from the doctor. Oh, but wait. You don't have to go That's just to because... go. Adios. Don't come up. Come. Larry, do you just let the herd I was. And to think I had the nerve to pose it. Oh, well. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah. What's going on here? There they are, Sheriff. The men who robbed and killed my husband. Who did the shooting? Shut up, you fool. Why should I? You were going to fuck me a while ago, you double cross and pole cat. You killed Lewis, you know it. Well, we'll take all three of you. We trailed that masked man here, Larry. Where did he the go? The masked man you trailed here, Sheriff, was really me. There's the mask and the white shirt. Why, hey, I thought a man who dressed like that was the leader of the gang who killed Uncle Jack. Well, I'll be... You were the one who went in all them cafes then? That's right. We were looking for the men Uncle Jack described. We never took anything. We found one of them tonight. Well, it sure is a joke on these outlaws. <laughs> no, no, sir. They weren't fooled at the end. They were going to kill Larry and me. This don't make sense. How did we you... were saved by the masked man, the one I made up like. He was a tall, handsome hombre, and quick as lightning with a gun. I get it now. When you talk about an hombre like that, I know just who you mean. Because there's only one like him. Who's that? Mm -hmm. You really know who Larry's talking about, Jimmy? Yeah, I was fooled for a while, but now I know. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.